Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu going on the record. The Prime Minister warning us a nuclear-armed Iran is not only a threat to Israel, but to the United States, too. Mr. Prime Minister, nice to see you, sir. Thank you. It's great to be back again. Nice to have you back in the United States. Well, it's nice to be back. So you just spoke to the Iranian BBC, is that correct? The Persian language broadcast of the BBC, yeah. That's unusual. First time. Why did you do it? Because I wanted to say things to the people of Iran. I said, look, you were once a great civilization. We once had a great friendship. You know, uh, Cyrus the Great was a great Persian king who enabled the Jewish exiles on the rivers of Babylon to come back to the Holy Land. That's 25 years ago. He said, go back to the land of Israel, rebuild the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. That's a bond. We had a great bond through history until the Ayatollahs took over. They hijacked uh, the people of Iran's yearning for freedom in 1979, put them in the dark ages. Now they're trying to develop nuclear weapons to eradicate Israel and to dominate with their crazy creed around the world. And I said to them, you know, we all have a vested interest that they don't get nuclear weapons. Certainly we in Israel, the people of America, the United States, they understand this would be nuclear terrorism galore. Uh, Europeans, Arabs, no one wants to see nuclear weapons, but you, the people of Iran, don't want to see nuclear weapons in the hands of this tyranny because it will become immortal like North Korea. You'll never regain your freedom. You'll be slaves to this tyranny forever. So you too, the people of Iran, want to see this regime disarmed from any nuclear weapons capability. That was my message to them. Well, it's sort of fascinating, you going around President Rouhani to speak directly to the Iranian people, much like actually the way that things have happened here recently with President Putin going around President Obama and putting an op-ed in the New York Times, Senator John McCain did in Pravda online. So we have these world leaders now who are almost bypassing the leaders to speak but to the people. But one, there's one difference, you know. I speak to my own people, and anybody can say anything about me, which they do, by the way because we have a free press, okay? And same thing is true in the United States. But Rouhani, the Iranian president, comes to the United States, makes a nice song and dance, a lot of smiles, soft words, and he tweets messages. He tweets messages in New York. When is he going to let the Iranian people tweet messages freely in Iran? They don't let that. That Persian, that BBC, Persian language uh, uh, interview that I just had, they jam it in Iran. So there's no freedom in Iran, there's no democracy, there's a dark dictatorship that seeks to develop nuclear weapons with mad designs on the United States. They're developing ICBMs. Who are they developing these ICBMs, these intercontinental ballistic missiles for? They're not developing it for us. They've got missiles that can reach Israel. They're developing it to reach you. And those missiles, intercontinental ballistic missiles, have only one purpose, a nuclear payload. So as the Iranian president is talking nicely to you, they're developing the weapons and the vehicles to strike the United States. They have to stop that. They have to dismantle their program, dismantle their nuclear weapons program. Now, that's not what they're offering. They're offering something entirely different. Well, this and I don't think we should be hoodwinked. Well, you used the word, um, there was sort of a charm offensive uh, by uh, President Rouhani when he spoke before the UN. The New York Times in their editorial seemed to be a little bit smitten with it, um, although they said basically trust but verify, but they saw that as a I positive. Say, I say distrust, dismantle, and verify. You do say that indeed in your, or your speech. Um, but you have the New York Times sort of at least seeing this as, as a change. Then you have the President of the United States for the first time since uh, the revolution in 1979 speaking on the phone with President Rouhani. So you've got the United States a little bit almost, I don't know if charmed is the word, but they, they, have, they seem to have softened a little bit towards the Iranians. Um, you have not. No, and I spoke to President Obama at great length. I appreciated the fact that, you know, on the day of the shutdown, he took a few hours to talk about this because we have a common goal to make sure that Iran does not develop nuclear weapons. Um, the shutdown we're looking for is a shutdown of Iran's nuclear weapons program. The president said that Iran's conciliatory words must be met with meaningful action. What is meaningful action? It's not a partial deal that leaves Iran with the machines and the material 
to make enough uh, fissile material, enough bomb material to make atomic bombs. It's got to be a complete, complete dismantlement. No partial deals. In the case of Syria, you didn't come to Assad and say, well, why don't you take out 20% of, of your uh, uh, chemical weapons? You said, full deal, full dismantling. That's what should be done here. And Iran does not need to have any residual capability for enrichment, nuclear enrichment, enrichment of uranium. You know why? They say, well, we want civilian nuclear energy. Okay. 17 countries have civilian nuclear energy problems without enrichment. You can have civilian nuclear energy, but the only reason you want enrichment capability is to make nuclear weapons. The real reason they want, they, they say, we'll make some tactical minor concessions, but keep the capacity to enrich uranium and uh, convert heavy water because that gives us the bomb. No, that's not what you take sanctions off. Complete, complete dismantling of Iran's nuclear weapons capability and then and only then relieve the sanctions. You've got them on the ropes. That economy is about to collapse. You know, you want to knock out Iran's nuclear weapons program peacefully, keep up the sanctions and go for the full deal, nothing short of it. No partial deals, no enrichment. When we spoke in, um, in March of uh, 2012, you and I, you said that the crippling sanctions were affecting their, their economy, but not their nuclear program. Then if you fast forward to now, you, you, uh, you, have, you argue uh, quite passionately um, that they need all their enrichment capability thrown away and to get, it, get it out of Iran. You met with the president on Monday and you made the statement about all the enrichment on Tuesday. On Monday in the Oval Office, did the president agree with you that there'd be no nuclear enrichment in Iran, that that's the position of the United States? Well, we agreed we need meaningful action. And so it's a, an interesting question. I mean, this is an intellectual exchange. I don't mean on a highfalutin level. I mean, it's a, it's a, a real exchange of people who are seeking the same goal. Let's see how we get it. And I think there's I think the U.S. administration and the president are now trying to work out what is the best way to do it. But the last thing you want to do, here, here's, here's the worst thing that could happen. Because of the so-called charm offensive, with the unchanging goal, that I guarantee you, the unchanging goal of maintaining Iran's nuclear weapons capability. They make some tactical concessions. This is the Wuhanese plan. He smiles, makes some tactical concessions, keeps the bulk of the machine and the material so they can one day at the time of their choosing rush forward and create enough uh, enriched material, enriched uranium for nuclear weapons in exchange for the lifting of the sanctions or even partial lifting of the sanctions. Here's what will happen if you do this. They'll maintain the capacity to break forward with the nu two nuclear weapons and the sanctions regime could collapse. You remove some of the sanctions, there are enough countries out there who are waiting for this to happen they'll drop the sanctions regime altogether. So what took us years to put in place, and you know how, how long I've been talking about it, with you and with so many others, it took us years to get the international community to put these very strong crippling sanctions in place. You let them go, and Iran will make some concessions that they could reverse in weeks. Who wins out on that? Iran. Who loses? The world, the US, Israel, the Arabs, everybody. We have much more with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. And up next, he warns President Rouhani will hoodwink the United States and the rest of the world. You're going to hear what the Prime Minister plans to do about that next. And in two minutes, you're going to hear from the